Hi! Thanks for checking out my video. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on a spinner cart and I'm going to be using the Cricut Maker This is the file I'm sharing with you. It's going to be a little honeybee that buzzes around the beehive. The number of mats is determined by the size of the paper. I'm going to be using 8.5 by 11 paper for my card. And now that it's all cut out, I'm going to start with the envelope. As you can see, I cut a little B out of the corner there, so now I need to line that piece for mailing purposes. I'm using art glitter glue. It makes it easier for me whenever I'm doing a project like this to use wet glue instead of double back tape because I might need to shift it just a little bit to get everything straight and with wet glue you get just a little little time to do that. As you see I didn't put the glue all the way down because I didn't want it to uh, be where the bee is and I'm going around the edge of the bee so that it's adhered well and won't hopefully catch on anything in the mailing process and maybe rip the envelope open. My next step is to take the other panel of the envelope and fold it along the score line. And I'm going to burnish that edge so that it's nice and crisp and flat. And this time I'm going to use some really heavy-duty double stick tape. If I can find the edge. There we go. This tape does come in a lot of different widths. This is just what I grabbed, so I'm going to have to use two lines of tape on here. I want to make sure it's covered really well and I don't want my envelope coming apart in the mail before it reaches the recipient. I want to make sure it's lined up really well before I let that tape touch because once it's stuck it doesn't want to let go. I'm going to do the same thing on the flaps of the envelope.
It was just a little bit sticking out over the side, so I'm just going to trim that off. No biggie. Okay, we finished with the envelope, and now we're going to move on to the card. When we, whenever I cut the pieces to this card, there's a few little leftover pieces. There's the bee that came out of the envelope. It doesn't really have a place in the project. I'll probably just glue it to the back of the card itself or somewhere inside. These little rings get cut out, but they aren't used in this project, so I'll just set those aside and save them for something else. And then with the little pieces that come off the mat, I collect them in a little cup so they don't get lost. I'm going to begin by folding it on the score line. I'm going to burnish that to crease, make sure it's nice and flat. And I want to start with the inside sentiment that goes in, in the card. I'm going to use some art glitter glue again. This is a good glue for me because I get kind of messy. I have trouble being neat and tidy and art glitter glue dries clear if I get it somewhere where it doesn't belong it won't ruin my project it dries really quickly so I don't have to sit around waiting for the glue to dry it doesn't ripple and um, warp my paper it's just an excellent glue for card making. Now this is a uh, rubber brayer. I believe it's made by Mod Podge and sometimes whenever I'm gluing panels together like that I like to run that over it and squish that glue out so that it spreads it out and gets it closer to the edges. Just a little more even distribution. Now the spinner card is um, a card that once it's done you want to play with it. So I'm using multiple layers on the panels on the front so that it's a little sturdier and can hold up to being played with. The first couple of spinner cards I made, I just used single layers of cardstock, and they didn't hold up very well. So I began using multiple layers glued together, and that seems to work a lot better so that you can actually play with it, which is the whole fun of a spinner card. So these two panels get glued together. You could even do a third layer. It wouldn't hurt anything. And again, I'm using the brayer just to spread that glue out. Now we start using all these little pieces that are in this cup. There's the cinnamon that goes on the front. And those little circles. And parts to the beehive. We'll get to all that stuff in just a minute. Let's start gluing the circles together.
have three of the yellow gold color and one black. I just want to make sure that it holds up to you know playing with it. So I'm going to glue all of the yellow gold ones together. They could all be black if you don't like to have that yellow showing underneath the black. You can change that if you want. This is the black circle. Now once you get them glued together, if it's just the black edge that you or the yellow edge that you don't like, you could use a black marker. It doesn't bother me because the whole card is yellow and gold, so I just ran with it and left it that way. Again, I'm using that little brayer to spread that glue out. I don't know if it actually helps or not, but I think it does, so I, I do that for most of my projects. This is the little cinnamon at the for the front of the card, and it says, um, Your sweetest can be. The inside cinnamon said happy birthday and the same little bee that's on the front of the card, I had it draw it on the inside of the card where it looked like it had buzzed around and written happy birthday on the inside. And there's a little flower that embellishes the sentiment so I'm just getting the little pieces for it. A little tiny dot. You don't have to use that little dot. You can just throw that out if you want to, but I decided to go ahead and use it. So I'm making sure that the leaf layer is in going the right direction to glue it onto the black black layer. If you had gotten the orientation wrong, then it you know wouldn't line up right. So that goes there and then there's the little yellow flower and it has a specific way that it gets placed on there as well. So make sure you have it lined up in the correct orientation before you glue it down. And I'm going to use a red marker and color in that little yellow dot that came out of the center of the flower. And we're going to glue it onto the cinnamon. The little yellow, or the little white, let me start over. The little red dot got away from me for a minute and I liked to never found it, but Eventually, I spotted it and it made it onto the card. Make sure that when you're using art glitter glue that you keep that pin in the top because it will dry out really quickly and then you have to take the time to clean out that fine metal tip and get it all unclogged. So I frequently put that pin in and out just to make sure that I don't let that glue dry out. You want to make sure that if you purchase the fine metal tip, which is a separate purchase, it doesn't come automatically with that bottle of glue, that um, you use the pin that comes with it because it's a stainless steel pin that won't rust. If you use just a standard sewing pin, then it's going to rust and it'll discolor your glue. I'm using my piercing tool to just kind of um, get some of the lines in the beehive cleared out. And I had a little paper burr on the side, so I just used an emery board to file that off. <clears throat> 
pardon me, I'm a little hoarse today. So you can just stop right there and um, you can leave your beehive just the way it is. But I decided that I would really like mine to have some dimension to it. So I'm using the Nuvo alcohol markers and I'm using the yellows out of that set and I'm just going to add some um, dimension to the, the beehive. I'm using the mid-tone to go around the edges and just flick some color in there. And next I'm going to use the lighter shade of yellow. And I'm going to go over the entire thing and blend out those edges. On camera it just looks like I made what I just did disappear but once the alcohol dries you can see the the two different colors a lot better I'm going back with the first color and just put a little bit more of that mid-tone in. Around the heart, on the sides of the beehive, and kind of across where the lines are. And then I'm going to take the deepest of the yellow tones and add, it's almost like a C shape around the the bottom edges to give it that rounded look some depth and dimension to it You can see, it just gave it a little something. And whenever you are gluing this beehive onto this circle, it fits just exactly, you know, edge to edge. Make sure that whenever you glue it on there, that you don't let it hang over any of the edges. It needs to be flush all the way around or it's going to interfere with this the little bee spinning around the hive. Now we're going to pull out all of the parts to the bee, and there are some really tiny pieces. And the two yellow gold pieces will get glued together, and they get glued onto the solid black piece.
the next layer is black filigree and it gets glued on top of that yellow gold layer and as you can see I just dot it around to get glue on those little thin lines Now the next step was the hardest one for me. I've mentioned in another video that I have some dexterity issues because I'm getting some arthritis in my fingers so these little tiny pieces frustrate me at times but they just make the whole thing complete. You just can't leave that off. So I'm going to put some glue on the B and I'm going to use the piercing tool to help me pick those pieces up and place them on that B. There it is. Now I need to put the panels and all of the pieces onto the front of the card. I'm going to pop everything up using foam tape and I'm going to use a double layer because there needs to be enough room for um, the pieces to move around. There's layer one, and then I'm going to place a second layer of the foam tape on top of the first layer. And I want to make sure that I can cover as much of that back as I can so that it's um, sturdy but I want to make sure that I don't get too close to the edge of the circle because the um, I'm using a penny in this one the penny needs to be able to slide around freely and not bump into any of the tape so I'm leaving that space for the penny to move And I'm going to check to make sure that I've left myself enough room. I keep a little bag of pennies in my work area in case I need them for a spinner card. See that penny needs to be able to slide around that circle. Now I just have to put the foam tape around the rest of the sides. Check my penny again. And whenever I checked it, that foam, you could see it from the front. So I'm just 
lifting it up and moving it over a little bit so that it's not hanging over the front edge of the card. Trying to get it centered on there. I'm not real crazy about that white foam tape showing on the sides, so hang around till the end of the video and I'll show you what I did about that. Now I need to do a double piece of foam tape on the back of that circle. I folded a piece over so it was doubled, and it's important here to get this line, you put the penny in first, and then you need to get that circle lined up so that it's the same all the way around it so that that B can slide around. Now I need to put the B onto that penny, and so I'm using these little bitty foam dots and I think I got those at the 99 cent store. I need two of them so that the bee is up high enough to clear the edges. Before I stick him down, I decided he needed to be glittery. So I'm using a little wink of Stella to go over that bee, just to give him a little bit of shimmer and shine. And there we go. Watch him spin. I'm going to put the sentiment on the card and depending on whether you're going to add somebody's name or not you know you want to check the placement if you wanted to put your friend's name down there or you there's room at the top you could put something there you could put something above and below the circle you know whatever you want to however you want to personalize your card I'm just going to put the sentiment down at the bottom and leave room and whenever I decide who's going to get this card I'll put their name on it and personalize it just for them. A little wink of Stella on the flower. Okay, This is where I'm going to do a eighth of an inch black satin ribbon around the edge. I'm going to put a little art glitter glue in that. It's like a little channel that just it just fits. So I'm going to put the ribbon in there and I'm going to put a little glue all the way around and slip that ribbon making sure it's flat and not twisted inside that little channel it fits just perfect it's about an eighth of an inch width of the little channel and that ribbon just s slips right in there And no more white foam tapes showing around the edge.
thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'd love for you to check out my other videos. Please like and subscribe and come back. There'll be more.